And in 1971, D.B. Cooper became a legend after hijacking a plane in the Northwest and then parachuted out of it with $200,000 in cash. But it happened again six months later in Utah. This time, authorities arrested the parachutist, Richard McCoy, a Provo man. Could the two men actually be the same person? Tonight is part two of ABC4 senior crime and punishment correspondent Marcos Ortiz. He looks at D.B. Cooper, the real McCoy. Richard McCoy, a BYU student and Utah National Guard pilot, did the very same thing as D.B. Cooper six months later. McCoy made improvements like not losing the money, but then again, he got caught and D.B. Cooper is still out there. Or is he? In 1972, Richard McCoy becomes a hunted man after parachuting out of the plane over the skies of Utah County. Hours earlier, he hijacks a plane going to Los Angeles. He demands half a million dollars. The plane lands in San Francisco. He gets the money and forces the pilot to fly to Mexico. But approaching Utah, he parachutes out of the plane and lands in a remote field near Springville. That same night, he asked Pete Zimmerman, who was 16 years old at the time, for a ride. He said, you know, I really need a ride bad. I mean, would you consider, he says, right on the south side of Provo, it's not very far at all. You know, I could really use some help. He takes the stranger to his home in Provo, but Zimmerman never forgets his face. Then a McCoy family member and a close friend contact authorities after learning of the hijacking. They tell authorities McCoy once boasted of hijacking a plane and is nowhere to be found that day. Zimmerman also goes to police after reading the headlines the next day. The FBI execute a search warrant at the home, finding parachutes, a typewriter, and nearly half a million dollars in cash, and McCoy is under arrest. It stuns his LDS ward in Provo, where he once taught Sunday school. Dennis Ash is in McCoy's ward. I was a, a ward member, you know. They were quite surprised. Newsman Terry Wood is also in the Utah National Guard along with McCoy. He remembers McCoy joining the search. Richard Floyd McCoy was piloting a Utah National Guard helicopter searching for himself over Utah County. <laughs> Unbelievable. Months later, the jury finds him guilty. It was uh, pretty clear. That he had and what, he was sentenced then to 45 years. But McCoy manages to escape from the federal prison in Pennsylvania. Months later, he dies in a shootout with authorities. McCoy's story doesn't end. It's just beginning. In a 1991 book titled D.B. Cooper, The Real McCoy, the authors claim McCoy is D.B. Cooper. The co-authors were Bernie Rhodes, a Utah probation officer who interviews McCoy before he was being sentenced, and Russ Calame, the FBI special agent in charge in 1972. Not only does McCoy look like D.B. Cooper's composite, but they discover many other similarities. Example, during the hijackings, each type messages using similar paper and gives them to the flight attendant. D.B. Cooper and McCoy demand fueling trucks parked in identical strategical locations during refueling stops. Each men know about aviation, weather conditions, and parachuting. Each use the back exit of the plane to jump. McCoy is a skilled parachutist and demo expert while serving in Vietnam. In both cases, Cooper and McCoy, that he used what we, well, how would you best describe it? I guess it would be uh, pilot lingo. In an FBI memo linking the two men, evidence suggests McCoy drives to Las Vegas, then to Portland days before the D.B. Cooper hijacking and returns to Las Vegas before driving back to Provo. They both sat in the same seat, and one of them, Cooper, left uh, the string tie, which Tina Mucklow was the, the stewardess, uh, gave to the FBI and told them that uh, she'd seen D.B. Cooper take the tie off. So this was the tie worn by D.B. Cooper. Back then, the Salt Lake FBI confirmed with McCoy's family that it belongs to him. From their book, agents show his sister-in-law, Denise Burns, the clip-on tie and clasp. Denise, in particular, according to Jim Tyson, said, uh, well, that's Richard's. Where'd you fellas get it? And he said, well, he got it off of the D.B. Cooper plane, and she broke into tears. Despite their theory that McCoy is D.B. Cooper, today's FBI doesn't agree. We've obviously looked at, at their case. We've looked at, um, you know, whatever bits and pieces we've been able to find. We've tried to, you know, track down DNA from the tie and have never been able to firmly connect um, the D.B. Cooper hijacking with any of the the allegations of others who might have 
done it. D.B. Cooper becomes a legend. His identity still remains a mystery. McCoy becomes a shooting star in Utah history. Pete Zimmerman still holds on to the 1972 subpoena requiring his presence at McCoy's trial. It was interesting, I mean, especially for a young kid, you know, but uh, I, I remember him just looking at me with a look of anger. And for the others McCoy met along the way, it's a tale not forgotten. It's one of the most amazing stories I've ever covered. It really is. It just had all the elements of a great story. The authors claim that FBI agents in the Northwest failed to gather evidence like fingerprints from the plane D.B. Cooper hijacked. Had they done so, the authors claimed it would have proven their theory that D.B. Cooper was the real McCoy. Marcus Ortiz, ABC4 News. Fascinating. Thank you, Marcos. We'll